from Mario to Master Chief. That game is awesome. 8 bit to high def. The battle is on. It's one team trying to beat the other team. Heroes versus assassins. Finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Legends versus monsters. She's the toughest bad guy in the game. I gotta thank these little digital guys with the big hearts. Does it feel good to be a champion? Yeah. Boom shakalaka. We're counting down the top 100 video games of all time. Cool. Mario Brothers is basically like a, a quest on acid. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry. I love shooters. Best game of all time is Mario Party. Skyrim is a way of life. Best game of all time. That's the game we used to play a lot. Portal is the best game on the planet. I got really hooked on that game. At number 40, an arcade classic that shaped the future of video games, Space Invaders. <laughs> Space Invaders was released to arcades in 1978 and blew people's minds. It absolutely blew our socks off. It was unlike anything else we'd ever seen. I'm 40 years old, so I was there, okay? I was there when pinball players were like, what's that box over there? I only play pinball. What is that thing? Huh? And like cavemen, we wandered over to this big box that had uh, space invaders. I was there at the birth. If I could think of a game that I was really into as a kid, it would be Space Invaders. Just nailing them. That was, I was into that. Space Invaders was one of those games where you just go like this. And the guy, they're all dancing. Got to move. You gotta move it. Mm -hmm. We gotta hit the UFO. Every time you shoot one, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. To the one guy's like, no, 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 no. Like, why was the one guy so damn fast? But every but together, they were just slow. Mm -hmm. I remember being in an arcade as a really young kid and just hearing this dump, 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 and it was just so it's just strong, powerful bass sound. You had this emotional reaction to it. Thump, thump, thump. It was the first one to really use audio in that, in that way to make you feel something. Everybody was playing Space Invaders, and by 1982, it had made over $2 billion in quarters, while the console port quadrupled sales of the Atari 2600. I don't want to give away my age, but I'm old school Atari with the, with the joystick and Space Invaders. Yeah, it was dazzling, because these were real alien spaceships, and they were coming to get you, and you had a laser cannon, and you could fire it and destroy them and possibly save the world. Do, 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 do. Oh, I love that game. Next up, the title that managed to capture the appeal of grinding a rail and expand the scope of sports games in the process. At number 39, it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I remember playing Tony Hawk back on the PS1. That was like my first skating game that I played. When the original Pro Skater hit the PlayStation in 1999, the game had a lot to live up to. I wanted to make a game that skaters would be proud of, you know, even if they didn't play video games. Not only did it bear the name of the most popular skater in history, but it was expected to accurately capture the skating experience something that hadn't quite been accomplished. I remember the half pipe on that game was, was gnarly, man. I loved it. I remember spending a whole day doing motion capture, and at one point, my board shot up and hit one of the cameras, and it took them three hours to reset all the cameras in the right place. Everyone would compliment the motion and how realistic it looked, and they're like, it looks just like you doing that trick. I'm like, same animation for all the skaters, but cool. The true appeal of the Tony Hawk series has been in capturing the skill and finesse of real skating, especially for gamers who maybe, you know, aren't actually that coordinated. 
if you were like a fat kid with glasses and braces and acne like this guy, you weren't very good at skateboarding. So this game made you feel like you were really good at skateboarding. Also, you could do a kickflip while collecting a VHS tape. And you can't do that in real life, even if you're not the fat kid with glasses and braces and acne. It would inspire you to go skateboarding. You know, you'd play Tony Hawk and you'd be inspired to actually skateboard, and then you'd get out there and you'd like ollie once, skin your knee, and be like, this, let's just, yeah, this is, let's just go eat a Hot Pocket while playing Tony Hawk. The first pro skater was a runaway success, launching a fan favorite franchise. Two thumbs up for Tony Hawk, man. You a legend. Next, strap on your power suits and get ready to roll. At number 38, Super Metroid. Super Metroid was fantastic. One of the greatest video games ever crafted was Super Metroid, of course, for the Super Nintendo. It was easily the greatest game that I had ever played. 1994's Super Metroid gave fans of the original NES classic a reason to get excited. Super Metroid took everything that made the original great and just knocked it into the stratosphere. I mean, Super Metroid had amazing gadgets, amazing weapons. It had backtracking. It had character development, even though there really wasn't a story. It was, it was a very cool game ahead of its time. You went through each level trying to find different parts of your suits to make you awesome. For many gamers, the most awesome part of Metroid was the heroine, Samus. Everybody just assumed that Samus was a boy, and then it wasn't a boy, it was a girl, and she was awesome, and she saved that planet, and, you know, I just remember being really proud to be a girl. It made me feel like I was a superhero when I was playing it. She was a badass, and that was really important to a little girl. That game, top five games of my life. And now, the game that set a new standard for first-person shooters. Good to see you, Master Chief. At number 37, Halo Combat Evolved. Halo was definitely the game that got me into console gaming. I was never a console gamer. Definitely a Halo guy. Yeah, so uh, from the first Halo came out till now, so I love Halo. I love the storyline. The gameplay is awesome. I love the online play. There are certain songs you hear from games that just make you so happy or take you back to a time that was so awesome. And every time I hear, oh, 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 the theme song to that game is so incredible. This is how much of a Halo freak I am. This is awesome. Halo was an instant hit upon its 2001 release, breaking sales records and creating a frenzied devotion to the game. We used to play four player split screen. We would play this game all night until the sun would come up the next morning. And we would hook up like three different TVs in the house and we would just go bananas. There's just nothing but laughter and people calling each other names and occasionally throwing things at each other, shooting your buddy in the face and then going, ha! Ah! And he's like right there, like that's the best. What are you doing, amigo? When I would kill you with a pistol from across the map, I would say, another Casey Kasem long distance dedication. Everyone hated when I said it, too. I even got my roommate who was not a gamer to play because I wanted to drive the Warthog and have someone else shooting. I'm on a four-wheeler. I got my friend on the back. He's holding a machine gun, and we're just coming through, just spraying people. If you ever see a black car driving down the highway, and it says, my other car is a Warthog, that's me. Want some more? Halo also introduced gamers to one of the most beloved, most enduring, most all-around badass characters ever, Master Chief. Master Chief, he, he's one of my favorite characters. He's a classic. Master Chief is hot. Is it true? There's Jesus, and then there's Master Chief. He's, he's right there. The flood is spreading. If we activate Halo's defenses, we can wipe them out. Master Chief, multiplayer, and an unforgettable score. For many gamers, Halo is still the greatest first-person shooter of all time. I think Halo is heads and tails above any other game ever created, and I will say that till I die. Coming up next, the games that let you climb inside the cowl. I was blown away. <laughs> or climb inside the ring. 
You can't punch all Indians when they're ruby shimmers. But first, in Batman Arkham City, which villain is voiced by yours truly? The answer, after the break. Before the break, we asked, which villain in Batman Arkham City was voiced by yours truly? The answer, the Penguin, Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> Now a game that puts you right inside the Cape Crusader's cowl for an awesomely immersive adventure. Today isn't a good day to lie to me, Bane. At number 36, a title that shattered the rules of superhero games, Batman Arkham City. This is gonna hurt. I like Arkham, Arkham City, City uh, it, it's pretty sick. Really good. I was blown away. <laughs> you play it and you feel like you are in the comic book and you're actually a part of it. And all the characters, they, like their interpretations of Joker and Bane and Clayface. They're untouchable, man. There's plenty wrong with me. The sequel to Batman Arkham Asylum, Arkham City was released in 2011 to near universal acclaim, thanks to its insanely detailed environments and a combat system that let players lay the smack down on Batman's most fearsome foes. Arkham City came along, suddenly I'm like, oh, that's how this should work. I should be able to sneak around and target people with my batarangs. Hang upside down, string a guy up, and then grapple boost over to the next gargoyle. Oh, the flying, you get to bat glide. It's like so awesome. And not only that, but when you bat glide, you can hone yes. in on a group of person or one person, you can glide kick them. There's nothing that beats that. It's so amazing. Unrivaled action set in the most expansive world yet for a superhero game makes Batman Arkham City a truly unforgettable experience. The cool thing about it is that it's something that surprises you every time you play, because there's so much to do. The whole city that it's open format is gorgeous. You can do whatever you want. There's so many separate missions that you can do. I think it's really just the best representation of the sort of insanity of Batman and his world of foes that's that's ever existed. Avengers is the new bar for superhero movies, and Batman Arkham City is the is the bar for for superhero games. You know, it's amazing. Next on our countdown, a side-scrolling classic that gamers and goth kids can both agree on. What is your business here? Our number 35 video game of all time is Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. I will play that game, I will beat that game, and immediately start playing it again. But enough talk! How about you? 1997's Symphony of the Night was the first installment in the series for Sony's PlayStation, sending a dashing hero into the depths of a creepy castle to battle evil priests, giant bats, and Dracula himself. Brand me! Okay, I love Castlevania Symphony Night so much. It took all of the best things that made Castlevania so great on the original Nintendo and amped up the graphics and still made it fun and feel like the way Castlevania was supposed to be made. You still had your whip, you had you know your, your usual tools, except it was just bigger and it was better and it was more frenetic. But the best part was the weapon of holy water. It was like uh, great for my family too, who was super religious, and my grandma wanted me to be a priest, and so I was like, I'm throwing holy water! Castlevania Symphony of the Night was an enormous adventure that rewarded players for exploration. I'm just gonna spend the next 10 hours searching for a key and breaking every object that I find in case a key pops out, because it could. It was the greatest Castlevania and still remains the greatest Castlevania because no Castlevania that has come out has been close to how awesome it was. Symphony of the Night isn't just the best game in the Castlevania series. It's one of the best side-scrolling adventures of all time. It should be on every top 100 list ever from here till the end of time. Anyone that doesn't have it on that list is a moron. No, it cannot be! 
What do you get when fans hack into a highly regarded game and alter its programming? <laughs> Only the most popular first-person shooter in the history of video games. At number 34, Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is a game with amazing longevity. I spent a lot of hours playing Counter-Strike with friends online. That was just playing for like eight hours nonstop. Counter-Strike started as a fan modification to the hugely popular Half-Life. A retail version was later released in 2000. There's something really satisfying about the team-based combat. You really have to talk with your teammates in order to win, and you cannot go Rambo. I was never any good at it, but it was fun. I got killed a lot. Counter-Strike is still wildly popular and has sold over 27 million copies since its release. Hop on your chocobo and join us for the most celebrated triumph in a series of legendary games. At number 33, the RPG masterpiece, Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII is an RPG that changed my life. Final Fantasy VII is the first time that I played a game obsessively for hours, and then I was in that world. That game was just, it was amazing. It was, it was larger than life. The release of Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation in 1997 transformed the series from popular into a flat-out phenomenon, thanks to its cinematic cutscenes, clever combat system, and a great story. They took it out of the typical fantasy element. It was no longer about magic and wizards and dragons. It was this futuristic world, and your main character drove a motorcycle. What made it fantastic for me was the cutscenes. I mean, the cutscenes were, I mean, it was like watching a mini movie in between each battle sequence. I spent 110 hours on that game. I had my golden chocobo. I had Knights of the Round. The seven minute spell that you had cast. Anyone that took the time to get Knights of the Round never forget that intense, like five minute long animation sequence every time you cast it. Playing was just, it was beautiful and it sort of went seamlessly. It wasn't like a herky jerky like a lot of games were. That's and it's a iconic game. Oh, it was gorgeous and I and I miss it. <laughs> I want to go back and play it now. I really liked it. All right, <laughs> kids. It's like, okay. The immense popularity of Final Fantasy VII not only launched the PlayStation into console prominence, it helped to establish the role-playing game as a mainstream genre the world over. It was just this epic, epic world and story and um, it opened my mind to what games could be. It was so beautiful and so amazing and there were so many elements to it. I just, it actually hooked me onto RPGs for life. Coming up, whether you're taking on Mike Tyson. That's a badass. Or the Dragons of Skyrim. How can you not like that? It's almost time to finish the fight. One down! I'm a pacifist, but not when I'm fighting the Covenant. Beware, the demon is at hand. But first, which game was the first to play the entire national anthem? The answer when the top 100 video games of all time returns. Before the break, we asked which game was the first to play the entire national anthem? The answer, Double Dribble. Pummeling its way into the countdown at number 32, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. <gasps> I loved Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. That was the best fighting game probably ever. Released for the NES in 1987, players stepped into the ring as Little Mac and fought through a series of increasingly challenging opponents. The first guy would come out, easiest guy in the world. Why would he even be a fighter? Like, like you obviously earned the name Glass Joe. Glass Joe, knock him out! Like, hmm, hmm. You can, you can beat his ass. I'll have their signature move. There was the Indian guy would disappear, and so he'd show up here and punch you, and then show up here and punch you. The Great Tiger I had to convince some people that you can't punch all Indians when they're ruby shimmers. Soda Popinski, the big Russian guy. 
that would drink a lot of soda and act drunk who knew what was in that soda. <laughs> Bald Bull, he was intense when he would come with his bull charge. He would like get in the, the back of the ring and go like <laughs> and then he'd storm forward. You had to time that perfectly or you get knocked out. <laughs> The little Mac could just beat the crap out of Hippo by hitting him in that stomach when he opens up his arms. You'd wait for him, he'd punch you, and you'd dodge and dodge. And then you could pound him in the stomach a bunch until it was totally over. The cool thing about Punch Out 2 was it had like a little story in it. It would show you jogging while your trainer was like this old fat black dude would be on a bike. That was just awesome watching him train, right? Riding along and with his coach. You know, what was the song? I'm trying to think. Do you guys remember the song? Key shift. When Little Max wearing that pink jumpsuit, it just goes to show that he doesn't give a f That's a badass. If you can wear pink and still get in the ring with Mike Tyson, I mean, come on. The game ended with an epic showdown between Little Mac and the man himself, the fearsome Iron Mike. I thought about one character, Mike Tyson. I was coming after his ass. He's this gigantic, scary beast of a thing that is way fast. It's kind of how I uh, how I feel when I'm standing across the, the cage from an opponent. I wonder how many people went up to Tyson in real life and was like, I kicked your ass Nintendo, and he was like, bam. What, what'd you say now, bitch? <laughs> Up next, one of the most sprawling and ambitious video game adventures of all time. Skyrim is not a game, Skyrim is a way of life. At number 31, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Oh my god, Skyrim, I can't stop. Skyrim is the game that you go into and you think, oh, I'm just gonna spend a few hours playing this. And then 40 hours later, you're still sitting there reading books, doing alchemy, creating your potions. I can't stop, I bought it the day it came out. And I have not, I've been playing it ever since. It's been months. Just walking down the street and a dragon drops out of the sky and you beat it to death with a club and a fire hand. How can you not like that? I, I've been playing a, a dark elf mage. I named him Gene Wilder. He's the arch, arch mage of Winterhold if that's impressive to you in any way. I went to magic school for probably 30 hours. That's almost a real class. And although Skyrim is a single player experience, it's one of the best examples of what an online community of loyal fans can do when a game maker releases its development tools. I did watch the YouTube video with Randy Savage as a dragon and that is incredible. Yeah! It's like basically the dude flying around as a dragon, but it looks like Randy Savage. He's like, snap into a slit, yeah! Oh, yeah! He's breathing fire at you? Yeah! Everything about it is amazing. Uh, the open world gameplay is amazing. The stories are great. And there are just, there are dragons flying everywhere. And the, the sense of scope and scale is really unlike anything I'd ever experienced before in video games. Uh, and that's why Skyrim's so great. Up next, the most kick-ass arcade game ever. At number 30, Super Street Fighter II Turbo. The best thing about Street Fighter II was all the sounds that they would make when they were fighting. Sure you can. And then the, the uppercut was. Uh, Sonic, boom. Dalzim had the uh, yoga fire. Yoga fire, that's racist. Win. Super Street Fighter II Turbo hit arcades in 1994 and became an instant favorite for an entire generation of gamers. This is a game I grew up playing, grew up loving, all, all my friends, we all did. Some of the most fiercest competitors were on that video game. I mean, guys that you didn't think, you thought were like nerds and stuff, when they got on that video game, it transformed them. Super Street Fighter II Turbo transformed the series by adding super combos to the repertoire of all the famous fighters. I was Balrog. I was always Balrog. I really liked uh, Dalsum. 
because he could stretch and I could keep my opponent away fairly easily. And uh, when I didn't use him, I used Chun-Li. I just remember there was this one kid in my neighborhood named Malik, man. He used to play with Chun-Li and nobody could beat him. Every time you get to him, he had that kick out on you. <laughs> She was so sexy back then, man. She was like the she was like Beyonce before Beyonce. I mean, anybody could get on there. Anybody could be a button masher. Anybody could have a good time. Anybody could play, and anybody could beat somebody else on a quarter. You know, it was just a, it was just a fun game. And now, a game that combined role-playing with one of the most beloved science fiction franchises of all time to create an undisputed masterpiece. Ah! At number 29, the force is strong with Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Knights of the Old Republic is my favorite video game of all time. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is awesome on so many levels. All the different planets, all the different characters you can interact with. Released in 2003 for the Xbox and PC, in Knights of the Old Republic, players must assemble a powerful team in the quest to defeat a dark Sith Lord. I will break you. I'll never fall to the dark side. It's a really amazing, immersive story. What was great was that you had moral choices and you could choose to be light side or dark side. Of course I went evil first. So betraying everyone, please save my child. Murder, go out, find the kid, murder him. Freedom of choice, morality, and a massive world to explore, Knights of the Old Republic was a revelation that managed to expand upon a beloved franchise and create a new legion of fans. I'm basically an RPG player, that's my thing, and Knights of the Old Republic is the one that, for me, created the genre. And it was a world in which I could really believe in, and it was a world with a lot of hot familians, which made it even better. Coming up next, we get behind the wheel of the ultimate speed racer. I'm a huge fan of Mario Kart. Before taking the field with a Hall of Famer. He's in there for the touchdown. I mean, it's just a perfect game. Plus, we hit the streets of Liberty City for some messed up mayhem. I would play for a whole hour just evading the police. Ah! But first, which comedian made a cameo in Grand Theft Auto 4? The answer, when we return. Before the break, we asked which comedian made a cameo in Grand Theft Auto 4. The answer, Ricky Gervais. Next up, the most influential racing game ever released. At number 28, it's Super Mario Kart. I'm a Mario Kart guy. Favorite game of all time, Mario Kart. Well, Mario Kart was awesome. I'm a huge fan of Mario Kart. I can't stop. I just love the, the, the battle. I like to shoot shells at people. Released for the Super Nintendo in 1992, Super Mario Kart was a critical success, and more importantly, a lot of fun to play. Super Mario Kart came out, it was the greatest racing game ever, and it was fun because you were playing characters that you fell in love with so many years ago. We usually went with Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi, and tried to get some of the shortcuts. That was a lot of fun. I'm a Yoshi guy. Always Yoshi. There's always a fight between me and my brother. Uh, who, who got to play with Yoshi? I'm always Bowser because he just runs over people and he gets the best weapons. What do you mean Bowser? That blew my mind when the game came out. What? You could be the bad guy? Okay, why not? Don't tell Mario. That was a game where, you know, a girl wouldn't roll her eyes when you turned it on. Like, oh, you fat nerd, what are you doing? You know, that, they, they didn't do it. They wanted to jump in and play too. That was another one of those, like, sweating. Like, my friend would, like, dab my face. And I'd be like, the rainbow level, we just gotta get through it. Like, all day, for, like, weeks. Like, wearing the same pajamas for, like, seven days. You get to just screw everyone behind you with turtle shells, drop banana peels, they're slipping all over the place, go screw everyone, I got star power. F you, I'm winning. Peach has got it. Ding dong, bye bye <laughs> At number 27, Chrono Trigger. It's one of the most underrated, greatest RPGs ever. Released for the Super Nintendo in 1995, Chrono Trigger perfected the detailed side quests, battle mechanics, and plot points that define a JRPG. 
you could recruit characters, but you had so many more options and depending on the choices you made, if you did this thing, you got this character. If you did this thing, you got that one. But the most mind-blowing aspect of the game was also key to Chrono Trigger's plot, time travel. I love a game where you can time travel. I'll take any time travel game, and Chrono Trigger is the best one. Chrono Trigger is a game that I'll always go back and I'll always play again. At number 26 is the minimalist masterpiece for the PlayStation 2, Eco. You know, games today look like action movies and Michael Bay movies, but this felt like you were playing like a beautiful movie. The first time you sit down on the couch with that girl and you're holding hands, you can just tell like this is a unique kind of game. Eco uh, was really one of the first games I think that made me care about the characters in the games. You play as the boy Eco, and armed only with a chunk of wood, you must protect and guide a girl through the ruins of a gloomy castle while battling shadowy creatures. When you're standing looking up at a wall and the princess comes up and takes your hand and you feel the controller vibrate, you know, that, that was a great moment. The game sort of plays with light and shadows. Light is good, shadows are bad. The way the light comes in through the windows and stuff is really cool looking. It's not just you do a level and then you do another level. It's a castle that all the different parts of it fit together. The thing that made me cry about it was the ending was not a happy ending. When a story has a little twist at the end like that and you don't really get what you think you deserve, if it's done well, it's very powerful. Next up, the most controversial title on the countdown. At number 25 is the game that made gaming dangerous, Grand Theft Auto 3. Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto, come on now. Grand Theft Auto 3 is like so legendary. Love Grand Theft Auto 3. I started to play it and I was like, whoa, like this game is like crazy. Released in 2001, Grand Theft Auto 3 didn't just revamp the GTA series, it revolutionized third-person games. Whoa, I can do whatever I want in this game. And it strikes you as like, can I do this? Yes, I can do this. Can I get out of here and do this? Oh my god. Like, it's, it's just remember the first time I played it, it just it felt like you could do anything. The world, like getting in there and seeing how big the world was, and how bad you could be. Like, you can do some pretty crazy stuff in those games. It taught you a lot of skills that you may need if you uh, want a life of crime, right? Oh, you could pick a prostitute up, you could steal cars, you could jack people. You could maybe kill a prostitute if you want. Apparently, people are a little bit touchy about that. I would play for a whole hour just evading the police, just running from the police. They would say, stop! <laughs> you just keep running the whole game for a whole hour. Just run the fucking police, a whole hour. It's going up and punching a guy and then taking his car, it's kind of fun. The most infamously immoral title ever released, Grand Theft Auto 3 was a shot of adrenaline to the heart of hardcore gamers. But it really is an amoral world where you can do anything. And, uh, and I see why parents have problems with it, but I love it. Coming up next, we take on the Madden curse. When you make the cover Madden, good things don't happen to you. Before taking out the Covenant. That's a legendary video game. It's in my top five. I found him! Plus, we reveal the greatest survival horror game ever created. No game recently has made my heart beat as fast. But first, what video game character did Jean-Claude Van Damme portray on the big screen? The answer when the top 100 video games returns. Before the break, we asked, what video game character did Jean-Claude Van Damme portray on the big screen? The answer, Guile. Oh, plays, making plays, making man. plays. Well, you know, that's how my people like to handle their business. While your guys are out partying, mine are running routes. That? Oh, God, is that pretty. God, is that pretty. Yeah, I'm a gentleman. I like to be humble. I'm old school. I don't like to talk a lot. Rushing in at number 24, Madden NFL 2005. Greatest game of all time, any order, any year whatsoever. Madden 2005 
was the moment where my son beat me for the first time at anything. That game's in the trash right now. Madden 2005 was a highlight reel of features that showcased how far the series had come since its rookie year in 1988. It's so realistic, it's awesome, and it's kind of your way to live the life of one of those players or some of those teams, and it's awesome to be a part of it. Madden 2005 first, like the defensive playmaker and hit stick, put gamers and NFL players on the digital gridiron like never before. I definitely play Madden. NFL players, they love Madden. Like, Madden's probably like the number one game that everybody will play. Uh, I love playing Madden just because of all the features, the new features they got going on with the game. Playing the game, coming up, seeing the guys I, that you idolize, you know, and then to be one of those guys myself, it's, it's, it's a great honor. They love the game. They love how realistic it is. They love the terminology, visuals. I mean, it, it's just a perfect game, you know, as evidenced by how, how well it's been received. Madden 2005 was the first time the series sold over 6 million copies and helped propel Madden into becoming the top-selling sports franchise of all time. I gotta thank these little digital guys with the big hearts. Does it feel good to be a champion? Yeah. At number 23, Halo 3. Halo 3, it was a good game. Just the storyline, how they carry it on, you know, it's kind of its own unique touch to it. Halo 3 is a game that I suck at, but I played so much. That's a legendary video game. Released in the fall of 2007, Halo 3 included everything fans already loved about the game and the promise of closure in Master Chief's battle against the Covenant. I'm a pacifist, but not when I'm fighting the Covenant. You know? Here's what I like to say to the Covenant. Give me all of your energy weapons so that I may smash you, may I cleave you in two with your own, with your own gravity hammer. Don't talk. That multiplayer is fantastic. We play it around the office all the time. Like, Halo 3 is a fantastic game, but the new weapons, the new maps, the physics of it all. Sometimes when I'm playing online and people start talking trash, it, it gets out of hand. Let me tell you, it gets out of hand. When I played live, you know, I'm getting schooled by 12-year-olds in Australia, and, I, and uh, I'm calling them Harry Potter, and they're getting mad at me because they're like, Harry Potter's English, I'm Australian. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm just doing it to piss you off. With a record-setting $170 million in sales on its first day of release and solidified Master Chief's ranking as one of the most influential video game characters of all time. That game is spectacular. And then the, the franchise just gets better and better. Just to see how far that, that game has come and, and how big the franchise has gotten is crazy. A big, big, big salute to the guys at Bungie, the whole team that created the game. Kudos. Spree, game the lead. Next up is a game that was critically acclaimed and nearly impossible to find. At number 22, it's the Sega Saturn classic, Panzer Dragoon Saga. It's a simple story of a man getting on the back of a laser shooting dragon and flying around, not taking acid. Panzer Dragoon is what I order when I go to the Thai food restaurant. I get two Panzer Dragoons with some cream cheese in that. In this expansive four-disc RPG, you play as Edge, a young hunter who fights evil with the aid of a pretty impressive partner, a flying dragon who shoots lasers. What do you want in a video game? You want to be able to ride a dragon. If you can ride a dragon with a homing laser, that's even better. In Panzer Dragoon Saga, gave all that to the gamer and more. It was seriously some of the most cinematic combat that I have ever seen at that time for an RPG. I mean, it was pretty rad. Also dragons. While Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 dominated the market, the Saturn fought for life just long enough to sell a mere 30,000 copies of Panzer Dragoon Saga, making one of the best RPGs of all time a legitimate collector's item. If you try to find a copy now online, it's gonna run you about five to 800 bucks. This is an extremely rare title. It's a four disc set and like, you know, it's on Saturns. And to a lot of RPG gamers out there, it is considered to be one of the best because it is, it is a rare and valuable commodity in the game space. 
Up next, a modern horror masterpiece. At number 21, it's Resident Evil 4. For most people, I think Resident Evil 4 was the first time that the series really hit its stride. When it was released in 2005, Resident Evil 4 blew away gamers. It's not about it. Right. It like it's changed not just from zombies it, anymore. Well, yeah, like the virus is like the reanimation, but then it turned into like those parasites that were controlling people, and they would like explode out of them. There's zombies, and then their heads explode, and then there's these tentacles that come out. <laughs> So you're just like walking along in this like burned out, sandy, kind of a brown dirt world. And everyone that you're looking at, they're all like, whether they're dead or not. Those are some angry, angry Europeans. <laughs> and they are not happy you're there. And they want to kill you with chainsaws and a slow lumbering gait. RE4 did more than update the franchise. It set a new bar for survival horror by winning numerous Game of the Year awards. No game recently has made my heart beat as fast. <laughs> Coming up on the top 100 video games of all time. Oh my God, it's insane. Oh yeah. We're down to the final 20. It was just a real dope game. They're the best selling. I'm a huge Call of Duty fan, massive. Most memorable. Probably the game that I played most. And biggest games of all time. I had to finish it, I was obsessed with it. But there will only be one crowned the top video game of all time. <laughs> best game of all time. It is not their favorite than Lion. When the top 100 video games returns.